All right, it's 7.03, and we're going to call this meeting to order. Dr. Mizek, has the meeting been posted? Yes, it has. Very good. And roll call will show that all members, except for President Capito, who is excused, are at today's meeting, including student members Paris and Wes. All right, at this time, I ask you to stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Is there any uh, communication you'd like to share, Dr. Minzik? Yes. Uh, Greendale High School's graffiti robotics team is in need of mentors to help the team grow and reach its high schools. If you are a professional in one of these areas, your expertise can make a difference to the team. Adult members are needed in the areas of engineering, manufacturing, CAD, Java programming, website design, business, project management, marketing, and graphic design. Join us for one meeting or throughout the season, according to your schedule. Visit the graffitirobotics.org website for more information. Tickets are on sale now for the Greendale High School Spring Musical Oliver. The link to purchase tickets online is available on the homepage of the district website under news and announcements. Performances are set for March 4th, 5th, 11th, and 12th. 4th, 5th, 6th, oh, so 4th, 5th, 11th, and 12th at 7.30 p.m. with a special matinee performance on March 6th. The musical theater classic show showcasing the talents of a large ensemble cast, Oliver, also involves serious issues of poverty, homelessness, street crime, and domestic partner abuse. To deepen the cast's understanding of the work, the high school theater is partnering with Sojourner Truth Sojourner Family Peace Center to provide an educational workshop for students in the cast tomorrow after school. Additionally, during the run of the show, Sojourner will provide public information and resources to audience members. Following each performance, student cast and crew members will also collect a free will offering from the audience to benefit Sojourner's mission. As mentioned in the recent short cycle report by the District Business Office, Greendale Schools is reviewing long-term facilities goals to ensure our schools stay competitive and remain a district of choice for families. A team of students, parents, and community members is coming together to discuss the best ways to care for our facilities and plan for the future with available resources. The community is invited to learn more and provide feedback on goals for a long-range facility plan for our indoor and outdoor spaces. Guests are invited to choose from one of these dates, Thursday, March 10th at Highland View Elementary School or Thursday, March 31st at Greendale High School Library. Tours of the newly renovated spaces inside the school begin at 6 p.m. The listening session and opportunity to provide feedback runs from 7 to 9 p.m. Please contact Jonathan Mitchell with questions. And that concludes my communications. Thank you, Dr. Mizek. Next, uh, we welcome all of those who would like to share public comments. Uh, welcome to those speaking this evening. We would remind you that the school board meetings are for the purpose of carrying out the business of the district. These are official business meetings held in public. Through school board policy 186, the board allows citizens to make comments by scheduling two opportunities on the agenda to review citizen comments. In accordance with the intent of the open meetings law, please be aware that we the Board of Education welcomes comments from the public, but we cannot discuss those items or debate those items during public comment. In order to hear from all citizens who wish to speak and to ensure that the official business of the district is addressed, board policy sets a time limit for citizens' comments. Uh, we'll be adhering to that in tonight's meeting. Persons wishing to address the board are asked to come to the podium, state their name and address for the record. Comments are limited to one time. Individuals who will speak are limited to three minutes each. Citizen comments are limited to a total period not to exceed 30 minutes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I wanted to congratulate because cheer is near and dear to my heart. My uh, daughter was a four-year state champion in cheer. Greendale Varsity Cheerleaders taken second at state. Uh, the Junior Panthers traditional cheer team placing fourth and Junior Panthers game day cheer for taking uh, first. Um, my name is Tony Novenska. I live in the D section. Um, and I also wanted to thank uh, Noel and Thor for their dedication and service to the Greendale School District this past term. 
As most of you know, I am a candidate for school board, and I'm grateful to be moving on to the general election on Tuesday, April 5th. Um, one of the areas of my platform I was able to mention on a candidate forum is that I wanted to take a look at the balanced liter literacy methodology consisting mostly of the Lucy Calkins and the Fountas and Pinnell programs. My research utilizing the DPI website points to very clear data that is not that it's not effective as there's been steep declines. In the 2014-15 uh, school year, uh, GSD across the board was 73% proficient or advanced. By 2021, we dropped to 51%. Um, as you can see, this decline predates COVID by about six years. Um, and an equity point, for black students in 2014-15, their ELA scores district-wide were 49%. And now they're 23. To me, this is a solid, concrete equity talking point. Obviously, these programs do not work, but especially for black students. Let me add one more thing that I did not mention during the candidate forum. There's a second equity point I'd like to mention. Schools, as schools become more and more diverse, we will see younger and younger kids where English is not their first language. I realize that word decoding is still taught, but it's not the primary strategy. Ba-na-na. I just used phonics and I sounded it out. So I also can see in my mind how it's spelled. With young minds that are first learning the English language, decoding is essential because context for these words can be lost. As they slowly start to lose the proficiency of their first language to learn English, there is a limbo between the two language worlds that is created. And the price that we're paying right now is eventually 15-year-olds reading at a sixth grade level. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Welcome. Hi, my name is Tasha Hughes, and I live on Green Hill Lane in Greendale. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody that came out for the primary board um, elections, and I wanted to thank Thor and Noel for all of the work they've done for the school district, and they're going to be, you guys have big shoes to fill, so whoever takes your two spots really has a, a lot of work cut out for them. Um, I just wanted to give two shout outs. This weekend I was volunteering at the Pops concert, and I wanted to say the music that the students performed was amazing. The choir was wonderful. They had the orchestra and the jazz band. It's always like one of my more favorite um, concerts to go to, and it was really nice that it was back this year. Um, and then also, just so you know, the Greendale High School robotics team had their first scrimmage as a FRC team on Sunday, and it went really well, I guess. Um, they placed, I mean, they don't really place them, but when they did their little competition or their scrimmage, they came in like the top third of all the teams that were there, and they said they even beat Arrowhead, so they were very excited about that. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your comment. My name is Brian Bach. I'm from Clover Lane. Um, I want to again congratulate and thank um, Noel and Thor for their service. Um, it was greatly appreciated over the last three years. I'm sure it's not been easy, and it is recognized, um, all your work. And second, I would like to echo also Tasha's commendation for all of the members of, that participate in the POPs night. I have to say I'd commend them all. It was very impre quite impressive to see how many people jump between different different skill sets between playing the music and from singing. It was just awesome to see everybody hopping together and providing a very great show. Um, last thing I'd just like to mention is I wanted to commend the board and the forethought and everything with the refinancing plan. I know it was put out last meeting, but I appreciate looking at the budget and constantly seeing opportunities. As we know, we have a lot of transition time right now with our economy and everything but the forethought to make sure to refinance when we have that opportunity i appreciate that as being a steward of our finances as a resident thank you thank you for your comment welcome all right good evening i'm deania resident of greendale 
Um, I want to start by saying thank you to Thor and Noel for your service on the board. Um, today I am here to express gratitude to the principal of College Park, Carrie Owens. I worked at College Park for a short time. I remember going to the office um, to speak with her and the secretary said she's rarely in the office, she's probably in a class and she was correct. I saw Ms. Owen visiting classrooms often, speaking with students by name. She would ask students what they were learning, how their day was going. Greendale Welcomes Diversity Program always had a large participation from College Park. It is sad the board decided to dissolve this committee. However, this year, I believe every first grader participated in the MLK essay. During College Park's PTO meeting in September, Ms. Owens talked about the annual Halloween dance and if we should consider adding Diwali and Dia de Morto because they both are celebrated during this time. We all felt this would be an awesome idea and it was a huge success. We have a school board candidate that says he does not see color. I am glad Ms. Owen not only see color, but she celebrates it. A second grader um, who won the MLK essay wrote how people stare at him because he is in a wheelchair. They do not see the person in the chair, only the chair. In college, I met a student from Algeria. He was very smart, kind, and funny. One day he said, I wish I didn't have my accent. And I asked him why. And he said, so I could fit in. I told him, I like you because you are not like everyone else. It is easy for BIPOC students to want to assimilate and fit in. But I am glad Ms. Owens see and celebrate every student. I encourage you to congratulate Ms. Owens on the plaque that she received that acknowledged the difference she makes in our school. You won't find her in her office. You can find her greeting each child as they arrive at school or in the lunchroom or in a classroom. College Park is a special school because of the relationship Ms. Owens fosters. I applaud Ms. Owens for her leadership and huge heart. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments from visitors today? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to our agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve our minutes. Uh, no comment. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will move to approve the regular meeting minutes of February 7th as outlined in agenda item 1.1. 1 .1. Second. All right, it has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the matter? All right, looking for a roll call vote. Mary? Aye. Yes. Noel? Yes. And I'm a yes, so it passes. Moving on to the next item, we have financial reports. Jonathan, would you like to share and walk through our financial reports? Included in the board background item is uh, information regarding January 31st, 2022. So financials through the month of January. So seven months out of our 12 month financial year. Uh, revenues were at 27.96%. Um, I added commentary to that, that that's a little bit lower than what it would have been in prior years because um, a larger portion of the um, revenue receipt in January, our first property tax payment was set aside to debt service funds. And that's a requirement is that those funds be set aside first um, for debt service. And then our later property tax payments will be into that fund 10 general operating fund. Um, so we're still in, on track with what we would expect, but it's a little bit different than prior years. On the expenditure side, we were at 40.64%. That compares with 40.53% in the prior year. Um, so we continue to be on track overall for our operational budget. Um, I did provide an update to our ESSER funding. Our ESSER 2 um, expenditures increased to 45% of allocation with expenses that we had through the month of January. Um, our budget remains the same for ESSER 3, but we're continuing our conversations regarding the utilization of those funds. So in our budget planning for 22-23, including the second year of our instructional support specialist, as well as we're continuing our conversations around the UNIVENTS at Highland View. So we had some conversation this morning with staff members at Highland View and doing some of the planning um, that will need to take place regarding uh, the, the demolition and the um, installation of the new units and related cabinetry there. So uh, the team from PSI is really helping us to engage the staff members proactively to understand why we're choosing what we're choosing there um, and then what, um, what we can do to make those units 
um, fit within the classroom and maximize the space um, after they've, they've been installed. So any questions on the financial report? So I just had, a, I guess, a comment or a thought. Um, I was looking at the ESSER 3 budget allocation um, and noticed there was a $5,000 allotment for mental health resources. I'm assuming that's probably not going for personnel because that doesn't seem like it would cover that. But then I was also looking at personal protective equipment at 46000 and just kind of wondering as we are working our way through this pandemic, is that a number that's going to change and maybe go down and maybe the money be put elsewhere? Sure, as time moves on with personal protective equipment, we're happy to revisit that. Um, one significant expenditure that we have right now is we offer N95 and KN95 masks to staff members. And when we think about that over multiple hundreds of staff members, it's still a significant cost. So that'd be the grabbing one item that we see um, coming up for personal protective equipment. But as, as the months move on and we can see the new environment and where we where we are we certainly can revisit that number across the different levels of ESSER um, and make modifications as they see fit so you're not locked into any of these numbers then like we, we no. want we are not locked in but we want to make sure that we have sufficient funds so that if those things are needed that would make our staff members more comfortable that they have that readily available sure that we don't wait to, to order those things okay and in, in the interest of transparency are just outlining what we're projecting and planning for in these spaces and in terms of the mental health resources uh, you saw the sources of strength presentation from the high school mm -hmm. uh, Trish Kilpin was a nationally authorized trainer and uh, with her departure from the district, she st will still support, but we are looking to um, provide additional training to other staff members to bring them up to speed and, and continue that Sources of Strength program. And so that's what the mental health resources will be for. Thank you. One question on the ESSER 1. I know that 95% of that has already been allocated and spent. Uh, there's 5% left. Uh, some of the PPE, other things obviously can qualify for those funds, and those are due September 30. So I'm assuming that you know, that might be an opportunity to finish the expenditures on that one and close that out before spending it into ESSER 3? Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? I'm looking for a motion to no motion necessary for, oh, for approval of checks and disbursements. Oh, sorry. Yep. You need we that. would need we would want a motion. <laughs> want to send the sorry. checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I approved checks in the amount of five hundred thirty-six thousand two hundred eighty dollars fifty-two cents and disbursements in the amount of two million six hundred eighty-five thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars seventy-five cents for a total amount of three million two hundred twenty-one thousand nine hundred twenty-nine dollars twenty-seven cents, as outlined in agenda item two point two. I'll second. All right. There's a motion and a second for approving checks and disbursements in a total amount of $3,221,921.27 as outlined in agenda item 2.2. Roll call vote. Mary? Aye. Yes. Well. Yes. Kathy? And I'm an aye as well. Passes. Right. Moving on to new business. So first up on new business is parent transportation contracts. So this is a semi-annual agenda item that comes to the board. Um, so those uh, Greendale residents whose students are enrolled in private schools and meet certain qualifications under state statute um, are offered a parent contract in lieu of the district providing a contracted bus um, to support transporting them to and from school. So a list of those families that have signed off on parent transportation contracts was provided to the board and the first payment to those families um, would be $21,525.40 and that's scheduled for February 25th. Um, to add to this discussion because we typically discuss this annually um, and as we're doing our work with the 22-23 budget we wanted to provide some additional data that may help in the discussion of our spend. So we were able to provide some reporting that goes back to the 18-19 school year, so pre-COVID pre impact, um, and take a look at Milwaukee area school districts and spending 
per student and as a percentage of fund balance. So the same calculation, but presented in two ways to see how the district um, stacks up versus some of the neighboring um, school districts. And you will see that we um, spend less um, than the other area districts um, in terms of our need to provide. We're required to provide transportation due to our distance, um, but significantly less than some of the other Milwaukee County school districts. So that data is being provided just so the board has some parameters of how efficient are we in our transportation spend. So there's two main factors that, that get us to that low level. One is geographically, we are relatively tight um, in nature. There are some um, school districts within Milwaukee County that are more geographically sp spread out. Mm -hmm. And so just to cover that amount of space is realistically gonna require more busing. The other is that the school district uses three tier busing, meaning one bus does a high school route, then a middle school route, then an elementary <coughs> route, and our schedules are aligned in accordance. And that allows us to reduce the number of regular transportation routes down to five for the entire district. So looking for any questions that the board has regarding the parent contracts. Um, otherwise, I would be recommending a motion for approval. I motion to approve the parent transportation contract as outlined in agenda item 4.1. Looking for a second? I'll second. <laughs> All right. So it's been motioned and has been moved and seconded to approve the transportation contract as outlined in agenda item 4.1. Roll call vote. Unless there's any discussion? Aye. Yes. Yes. And yes. The motion carries. Moving on to policies, second reading. So you uh, discussed the policies in the first reading at the last meeting uh, and uh, requested some updates to 172. The others <coughs> do not have updates. So we um, used the video from the meeting to ensure that we captured the discussion last time so that it is ready for approval. <coughs> Any other commentary from policy committee members or anyone else? Um, well, I think we, just for the sake of discussion, maybe we should just recap it for anybody who hasn't. You know, a special board meeting was a hot topic mm -hmm. <laughs> this year. So um, I don't know if you want to. You'd like me to read it or <laughs> cap it? Yeah. Um, so the previous policy stated that a board member could request a special meeting and uh, name the time and place, and there was uh, limited direction in policy around what uh, that they could request it of the clerk. There was limited information in policy as to what the clerk then needed to do with that request. And so what has uh, happened is we looked at sample policy from WASB and uh, revised the second section of that policy to be more clear on what the clerk must do and how the action must be taken to convene a special meeting. And so that's the, that's the significant change to policy. So the, the process would be, uh, according to the new policy, you would- The request, request would be made uh, to the clerk or in the absence of the clerk, the president, and then that would be um, the requesting board member, the officer who receives it and the superintendent would connect to uh, determine a reasonable date, time, and place, and uh, issue notice in accordance with um, the parameters here, giving at least 24 hours notice and ensuring that all board members are invited to participate. Uh, so that's the change is that there's a procedure with, uh, for how the special meeting is determined and uh, set. And there, I mean, there are special board meetings all the time. We just had a closed session that was a special board meeting. But this is different because if, if some topic comes up in between agenda items, it gives board members uh, the option 
to call a special board meeting to address that topic. Yes, to request a special board meeting to address the topic. And if the, it is time sensitive, then that would happen. And the, the collaboration could also determine that uh, it can wait until the next regularly scheduled meeting and be put on an agenda there. Or it could be determined that it's urgent and needs to happen before the next regularly scheduled board meeting. I just want to comment that I appreciate this, uh, the uh, policy committee going through this particular one because we have had requests over the last year in particular for special meetings and many times the item that people were requesting was going to be on the next agenda. So it was never like we were necessarily ignoring that, um, you know, the voice of people wanting to have that special meeting. But I do agree that there needed to be some clarification because as the board clerk, I received um, some questions at times about uh, special meetings and kind of didn't know where to go from there. So I appreciate the... And the policy remains that only board members can request a special meeting. Right. Any additional questions on the policies we're reviewing? Otherwise, I'm looking for a motion to approve. I'll move approval of um, action item... 4.2, policy 172. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the policies as outlined in agenda item 4.2, which is policy 172 and rule 656 changes, as well as no changes to policy 656. Roll call vote. Aye. Yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. The motion carries. All right, next up, agenda item 4.3, resolution for um, refinancing. Go ahead, Jonathan. I promise not to interrupt a motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, no worries, no worries. So the, the district went out to bid for refinancing of the 2008 referendum debt. This was last refinanced in 2014, and at that time could not be refinanced again until March 1st of 2022, thus the timeline that we're under now. Um, prior to this proposed refinancing, the district has a current balance of $5,855,000. There is a debt principal payment due on March 1st. In addition to that, um, this refinancing proposes including a prepayment of $1,900,000, which has been put aside in defeasance. Um, so the remaining balance after the refinancing would be $3,045,000. So roughly cut in half um, after, after this would take place. Um, this re this um, bond bid was done a little bit differently in that we contacted a select number of banks locally directly um, to solicit bids and what we were looking for was an offer where the district could continue to prepay um, in the remainder of these payments so the district saved about fifteen thousand dollars avoiding a rating fee by doing that um, but in doing so we can also prepay as of march 1st of 2023 any of those remaining payments that would still be there. So given that the district may do additional defeasance in the coming years, um, we wanted that availability and it also allowed us to save some of the fees. So PMA has assisted us as financial advisor and Quarles and Brady as bond counsel. The district received four bids and we're recommending the bid proposal from BMO. Um, uh, the refinancing overall lowers the overall um, debt burden and creates uh, levy capacity in the future years. Um, the refinancing allows the district to avoid $288,456 in future interest costs. Uh, the district also allows, the refinancing allows us to lock in current interest rates. So at the federal level, the Federal Reserve, which sets interest rates to the banks um, is discussing in March potentially raising interest rates and thus banks have already started to increase rates uh, in anticipation of that and so the timing of our ability to refinance is kind of matching up and there's no crystal ball that tells you exactly what's going to come in the next year but the anticipation is that interest rates will be significantly higher 
in the next 12 months. And so this would allow us to lock in this rate um, lower than what we are at right now at 2.13%. And that compares with 2.52 up to 3%, depending on which year of those future bonds. Um, and then the last item that I mentioned, it allows the district to prepay after one year. And so the district will maintain that ability. So the, the fiscal impact, we provided the net present value of the savings is $85,091. And we would be recommending approval of the bond bid from BMO Bank as presented. Jonathan, can you explain a little bit um, about the levy? You mentioned that we'd have space capacity for within the levy. Can sure. you explain that just a little more? Sure. So the, um, the revenue limit controls tax levies that are done in funds 10, 38, and 41. And so 10 is our operational fund, 38 is non-referendum debt, and 41 is for capital projects that are being done within the revenue limit. So that's all controlled via revenue limit, right? Fund 39 is related to this discussion, these bonds, and those are specifically for voter approved referendums, which this is. So the voters currently have two outstanding, the 2008 referendum and the 2018 referendum. And so what we're discussing here is a refinancing regarding what is still owed on that 2008 referendum. So the district can levy any amount that's still owed because it has been voter approved. So there are years where the tax levy may be decreasing because the district is receiving additional state aid for our general operating fund, but not allowed additional spendable revenue to increase overall spending for within the revenue limit. And so the district at that time can make decisions about whether you wanna use some of that authority to defease to prepay some of that debt. And that can have um, multiple positive impacts from uh, avoiding interest costs um, to uh, as well as um, avoiding interest costs and um, uh, avoiding steep spikes and drops in tax levy from year to year so that there's a level taxation. Yep. So the prepayment here allows flexibility in future years. Should there be significant swings that happen in future bienniums where the district could get significantly less in state aid and the board overall wants to maintain a flat to declining tax levy, the district can still continue to plan that out that way. As in our projections for the 22-23 school year, we've shown a projection that would have a debt defeasance in it and could still maintain a decrease in the tax levy. The last piece is, is as the district spends in those prepayments in Fund 39, as a positively aided school district, we also receive additional state aid on those expenses. So additional dollars that the school district can use. And so there's multiple benefits besides mm -hmm. just saving money. Yeah, it sounds and, like it. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the 25, 26, and 27 years, we essentially will cut that payment in half based upon this refinancing. Yep, so that creates capacity to be kind of nimble with nice. the, the tax levy given the factors that come up at that time. I think once upon a time, you, you were coming to every board meeting with about $150,000 mm -hmm. in savings. And we kept challenging you on that, so well done and continuing to do that mm -hmm. <laughs> across, the, across the board. Appreciate that, and I'm sure our, all of our residents and taxpayers also. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Obviously, you're keeping your eye on the checkbook and looking for ways, and you're keeping your eye on the Fed and, the, and you know, the anticipated uh, rise in loan uh, rates, and we're saving. So we're paying down debt. We're lowering our interest rate on the existing debt. We're saving interest, and we're getting ahead of a Fed increase. So thank you. You're welcome. You still have to make the motion and approve. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a question. I know that there is some paperwork that goes with this that I believe President Crepito and I will be signing. Is that right? I, I thought maybe it would be here tonight. but Correct. Correct. And we've already made accommodations. 
um, if the board approves this tonight, that we will take care of getting those those signatures ASAP. Okay, it was a lengthy document, 92 pages, I think. <laughs> yep, so. that's what happens when you take out debt, yes. Yeah. Very good, well, uh, looking for a motion to approve agenda item 4.3. I move to approve agenda item 4.3, resolution for authorizing the issuance and sale of approximately 3,035,000 general obligation refunding bonds, series 2022. I'll second. Very good. We have a motion to second. New roll call vote. Aye. Yes. Yes. And I'm yes. Motion carries. Now we move on to agenda item 5.1, risk management report. This, was, this report, um, uh, Jonathan collected information from you a couple meetings ago about what information you needed around the risk management report, and so that is back with some specific details. Go ahead. So included in that report is loss history for property insurance, workers' compensation, as well as our liability insurance over the last five years. So we provide that information as background um, for the, the board, we work with our vendor partners to try and negotiate the best deal possible. So you'll remember my predecessor, two business managers ago, worked to create a cooperative of school district and CESA districts that would share one independent consultant to help with the negotiation regarding those property um, uh, work comp and liability lines of coverage. So as a group, we have continued to grow since those, the, that year um, when the, the cooperative was created to have bulk purchasing power. So as one you know, medium-sized district, we're able to band together with 60 other entities to bring a book of business that is more attractive in the marketplace. And so we utilize that to do cost control as well as learn from other partners about effective strategies at risk management to keep down costs. So we've worked to try and quantify that in some fashion. And so one of the, the data metric tools we can look at is to see what other districts in the state are spending. And we took a look at that. Um, we were in the 10th percentile of spend, meaning 90% of school districts on a per student basis are spending more than Greendale right now. Uh, if we were to look at what the median spend is, uh, we're currently at $83 per student. The median's 125. If we multiply that by our current enrollment, that means we would need to spend about $115,000 more um, to be at the median um, of school districts statewide. So we know proactive programming and building a safety culture is the way to continue to manage this cost item moving forward um, with the goal of having dollars that get closer to the classroom by our proactive management. So I'd be happy to take any questions on that. Thank you, Jonathan. Any questions around the risk management report? It was an excellent report, very clear and concise. Thank you. Oh, and this is just informational, so you don't need a motion, right? Correct. I just had a question, I guess, about the, the property insurance. It said something that the district has a loss history over 100% over the last four years, and I didn't quite understand that. I don't know if you can explain that. On the property side? Yeah, the property insurance side. I was trying to make sense out of uh, that chart. I didn't so know that. So in 2016, 2017, um, you can see the losses there. And mm -hmm. there was a significant loss. We had two significant events that year okay. that required insurance. I don't know if you remember, but the tree fell on Canterbury. Oh, yeah. And we had a significant flood at the middle school due to a water main break. So our losses far exceeded the premiums that we paid. Okay. And that's essentially what a loss ratio is. Your what gets paid out by the insurance company to cover losses versus what you paid in premium. And so in 16, 17, it was then followed by um, 17, 18, in which we had a uh, higher loss ratio. And then the last three years, we haven't had much. But um, because of that significant loss in 16, 17, and uh, 17, 18, it affects our future premiums. 
Okay. And I'm impressed with your historical memory of Greendale that you could <laughs> just quickly recall 2016 disasters, Kim. Even well, they were big events. <laughs> they were big events the that tree. year. So. <laughs> Very good. And they've done some work around Canterbury now, too, uh, right? The forestry department has. Correct. All right, so seeing no more questions on risk management, moving on to agenda item 5.2, the WASB convention discussion. Oh, yeah. So all of the board members uh, present tonight attended the Wisconsin Association of School Boards convention here in January, and so we wanted to bring that back and just discuss across the board some of the takeaways and key items that we thought might be useful to the schools and to the administration in particular. So with that, uh, we do have some questions, some prompting questions, um, and we can kind of jump into those or we can kind of just move around the horn and, and discuss the things you thought were important and key takeaways. Yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, who developed the prompting questions? I don't know if we'll need help. Me. Oh, you did? Okay, if Kim <laughs> wants us to answer You don't have to answer I'm them. It was to. just to help guide your preparation. Oh, you're being You graded. can take it in whatever way you'd like, <laughs> sure. and you can discuss it differently. Well, I, I am just provided the, those to help you. I'm going for the advanced grade. Advanced. I'm going All right. for <laughs> No, you can go first, Kathy. I oh, know I you're don't have to. I, 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 am <laughs> I know you're happy to go. Uh, well, I have a lot to say, but I won't, I won't <laughs> belabor it tonight. I, I just wanted to say thank you to Julie Grotaforce and to... The, uh, Dr. Midzik, because both of them did present at the conference. I did not. Yes, get did Maggie Olson. Maggie. Oh, Maggie Olson did too. I apologize. Um, I did not get a chance to see Julie or Maggie, but I did have a chance to attend Dr. Midzik's, and it was well attended. And um, she did a, you did a great job just kind of laying out what our district is doing. Um, in ter uh, it was equity, right? It's um, continuous improvement co processes. Continuous and how you consider equity in that process. And equity in that process. And um, there were several questions um, from, from different school districts, and um, it just was a nice collaborative conversation. So I just wanted to say thank you to both of you for, for, and Maggie for um, you know, representing Greendale and what we, all the good that we have going on. Um, so I'll just, if it's okay, I'll just jump in real quick. Um, so I kept a schedule because I, I attended Tuesday through Friday uh, because of the delegate assembly, um, which I'll touch on that a little bit. But on Wednesday, I um, started the day with, um, with actually, wait, not Wednesday. Um, that was the delegate assembly. Thursday, that was. Um, the role of continuous e e uh, equity and continuous improvement. And it was just, again, good good to hear Dr. Midzik. And um, I had a chance to talk to other school board members as a result of that particular session. So it was, it was a good conversation. Um, leveraging community input, um, that was put on by, I believe it was Shorewood, Whitnell, and Menominee Falls. And um, they, they really had a great conversation, and I think there is work for us to do as a board and district in terms of continuously including our community. Um, and they had some strategies that they've done, anything from their newsletters to gatherings that they've done of different types. Um, and I, I thought it was kind of neat that the three districts actually worked together to collaborate, and I, I would like to see us as a board have that opportunity to maybe reach out to some surrounding um, community uh, uh, school districts and maybe uh, do do similar you know what are they doing to engage and, and what can we do to improve um, so I thought that was good and uh, I believe um, oh this one is for Paris and Wes um, I attended a session on uh, what can your students offer at school board meetings and they actually, um, Elmbrook was the one that presented that. They had a couple student board members um, that actually um, Zoomed in because they were at school and they got a little break away. But um, I really thought the two of you have been really instrumental in our board, and that's why I attended that one. And, and I personally, and I think the rest of the board, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of them, but I, we do value you sitting at the table with us. And um, personally, I like the way you chime in, you know, at uh, different topics and share your, your insight of what students are feeling. 
And so I, I thought that student was really good, but I, I felt that you guys could have easily been there, you know, sharing what you do as well, you know, both in the school as well as at the board table. So I just wanted to thank you for the work you did, and I was thinking of you while I was at the conference. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know we get to work with some of you guys more closely than others, but we value our time here and um, it's tapping into student voice, so we appreciate it as well. Yeah, thank you. I, I just really like being able to give the voice to my friends and um, all the students in my grade. I think, it's, I think it's a really important thing, and I just think it's such a cool experience to be able to do this for everyone. And I know that not a lot of people are granted this opportunity, and I, just, I think it's just a really cool thing that this is offered here, and I'm really happy I'm able to do this. Thank you, guys. Um, I'll just touch, I, I did get a book, um, I don't want to dominate the whole thing here, but um, we heard from Brandon Fleming on Thursday, those that were in attendance, and um, Larry Dukes from Pewaukee actually purchased this for us, it's a gift for our district, and um, the author did write a little um, inscription for Greendale School District, so this will go in the Greendale School District Library, but he did a great job talking about his background. He grew up impoverished and um, didn't have a lot of opportunities, and he ended up turning, um, I think it was it at Harvard? Harvard Project. Harvard yeah. Project, where he uh, worked with students um, um, from the inner city that uh, did a debate project, and it was really pretty awesome, and he was really exciting, you know, uh, very engaging speaker. So I, you know, I did gain a lot from that. I have not read the book yet, but I'll pass it on to anyone that wants to start with it. And um, that was that. And I'll share the delegate assembly after somebody else has a chance to talk. Great. Um, well, I also attended our continu the continuous improvement session with... Um, Julie and Dr. Midzik and Maggie, and it was very insightful and, and an excellent uh, presentation. But uh, <coughs> I attended a couple other ones. One was effective listening. I thought that um, even as an outgoing board member, we can always learn something from being an effective listener. And it had some really good strategies, but it also talked about listening to other voices, um, no, not the voices in our head, <laughs> um, but other voices and how, how to have crucial conversations. And, and, and um, one of the sayings was, if somebody's furious, get curious. So if you see somebody that's angry, find out why instead of, instead of combating back, find out why. And I learned a few things there. Um, another session that I attended was on First Amendment speech but it had to do with students so how it went from the tinker law back in the 60s to now we're getting into the social media realm and how does that affect um, when they're on social media whether they're on campus or off campus mm -hmm. and what rights do we have as a school board when they're off campus and what what you know how does that all play in and it's all it was very interesting very insightful um, some really good takeaways. Our policies do reflect that very well. So um, we are right in alignment with that. So I was very pleased about that. So it was really interesting. That was affirming. I mm -hmm. was in that session as well. Mm -hmm. good. Okay, and I uh, only attended one day. I'm very grateful to have been there um, on Thursday. Did not hear Kim. Sorry, Kim. I, uh, <laughs> I felt like I could pick up Kim's... Um, presentation anytime. Um, so I went to the new developments in school law uh, presentation. That was interesting, especially after this pandemic. I just, you know, we're all living through one of the greatest educational reforms ever. And so that will obviously affect um, policies and, and things that happen in the courtroom as a result. And then I also then I spent a lot of time in the exhibit hall, which I'm grateful for <laughs> because I haven't been to an exhibit hall in two or three years. And there were some really um, good giveaways and good information. I'm hoping uh, Clerk um, Vincent got a phone call from one of the exhibitors that oh. <laughs> I signed her up for. Um, <laughs> and I thought that was the only one signing Kathy up for things. <laughs> 
And uh, well, it was, it was an exhibitor from Kenosha, <laughs> so that's yeah. why. Uh, and then I attended um, a session called Cyber Crime. Are we ready for an attack? And that was also interesting. It was uh, presented by um, Hudson School District, so a smaller school district in northern Wisconsin. And they just, they said, you know, you can never be too ready kind of thing. So I hope, I mean, I trust Ryan. I, I know he's, he's excellent at what he does. But um, it was a little scary listening to what happened to them. So, uh, and then I, I also attended the general session with, with Brandon Fleming. And so his, his story is, you know, one of these amazing stories where um, all the odds were against him. He was a drug dealer. He played basketball and went to college on a basketball scholarship, but then he had an injury. Um, after that, he, you know, he took some college courses. He, you know, didn't really take them seriously. But it was one college professor that basically changed, he, he said, changed his whole um, outlook on education and academics. And because that advisor just basically showed him some love and empathy and basically just asked, you know, what happened to you? What happened to you? Like, you, you can do this. Why didn't you do it? You know, and whether it was a late bloomer kind of thing, he was finally ready uh, for some acad you know, academics or the circumstances were stable enough in his life. But it was after that um, encounter that he just kind of became on fire with um, education. And he now runs the Harvard Diversity Project, which is a program where he goes into some of the most impoverished, you know, most difficult crime-ridden zip codes and he looks for um, high school students who want to learn how to debate. And so he interviews them and he then, of course, Harvard, you know, pays for this whole summer program and his debate team has, you know, b become legendary. So they're, you know, just trying to prove the fact that with enough um, opportunity and interest, um, there's, there's some really bright, amazing minds, you know, even in difficult circumstances. So um, I'm sure there, there's a movie coming out on him soon. His book, I'm sure, is, is he's a fantastic speaker. You know, he mesmerized us all. So um, that was definitely w w worth the trip. So um, the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, I'll just end with, um, hasn't had their, they, you had a virtual conference last year. But um, school board members from all over the state come together and attend these sessions, and it's a good networking event, and it's also very educational. Mm -hmm. So it was really worth uh, my time. So I wanted to thank the um, taxpayers of Greendale for allowing me to go. Oh. If I can add, um, Brandon said uh, in his inscription, he just said to Greendale School District, always remember to love first and teach second. And um, I think he, you, you've really touched on it nicely, the message that he got across is that once he had someone that showed that care and concern for him, he was able to excel. And I think we have an amazing staff here in Greendale um, that do provide those opportunities for our students and, and try to seek out all students in some way. So. And I, I attended uh, the meeting as well, the conference. I went to mostly sessions on board management, facilities, financial responsibility, uh, continuous improvement, and then um, also community involvement, which Kathy and I were both in that one. The one thing also that struck me on that community involvement uh, meeting is that we talked about ways in which we communicate with our residents and with our school, uh, with, our, with our teachers, with our parents, with our different stakeholders. And they went through an exercise where we started capturing all this information and sharing it through a, um, through a QR code onto their screen. And they, it was eye-opening to see how much we actually do as a district. I think so often we get caught into um, we could always do better, we could always do more. But compared to our peers in this session in particular, I don't think there was someone that was close to us in the mechanisms of how much we communicate and how we communicate. Uh, with our parents and so that was I thought kind of an interesting 
uh, just experience to kind of think through. There were some really just shocking things that people were talking about in that in that meeting. Where, for example, they didn't have, you know, they've been navigating the pandemic for now two years, and they just finally put together a couple of months ago a safety team that was representative of their of their stakeholder groups. And you're thinking, how is that even a possible? Like, how did that happen? Um, so some of it was a little scary. Um, on the other parts of, of our state, when you're looking at it, and other things, we're just reinforcing that we're doing a lot of good work and that we should be proud of that work and continue to kind of push forward. One thing I thought was kind of intriguing that they mentioned was this idea of school liaisons. And I think Kathy and I both looked at each other because we're like, there's five people on the board, there's five schools. Mm -hmm. And we knew that before the pandemic, we used to try to engage in the school activities, you know, as much, you know, at least. Uh, staff-wise, um, you know, a staff meeting or something that tied into staff, something that tied into parents in the different schools. And I know I made that a goal to continue to do as much as I could in that uh, across my term on the board. So, you know, that could actually be reinforced through some type of a liaison position where there's a board member who's really kind of leaning in and just making sure that we're, you know, supporting and being helpful and, and cognizant of what's going on in those different areas. So that was an interesting takeaway. So should we bring that back with the reorganization around committee assignments? Is that yeah? I, I, I would that I've echo, heard? echo what he said with that because I I mean I think we have a natural here where there are five of us, and um, that could even be a rotating you know from each year you know unless you want that continuity. But I think it would be really nice to have a board member that's connected with the school in our district. And then you could specifically email your board member. So, you know, you could just, and not that you couldn't email all the board members, but right. there'd be one sort of point person right. that would be an expert on. And it also you know, ties building. in from not just the community, but also from the teachers, the principal. You know, they have, hey, these are some things you just wanted to keep you abreast of. Mm -hmm. I know we get all of the weeklies, we get all that information so we can stay in tune, but. You know, maybe you spend a little extra time on that specific school's weekly and diving into some of the details so mm -hmm. we know what's happening versus skimming through all five diff you know, different ones we mm -hmm. receive on Friday. Mm -hmm. And eventually it would be, I think, even though Greendale, geog geographically speaking, isn't large, but to go and have a meeting in the different buildings, I, I think that's um, a we good community building um, and we have too. done that in the past. We called it the road show or something like yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, exactly. I know with COVID, it probably put a little damper. It's, and it. plus, the, we're set up here to be able to broadcast to the community right. so that they don't have to leave their homes at all. Right. Um, right. But we yeah. could certainly do that if the board Maybe in wanted, the summer, to, you know, wanted to set up in the calendar of reports come June, mm -hmm. um, meetings scheduled at, at different locations. So we have 23 meetings a year, so you would... At least once a year, maybe. Yeah. What I like, I mean, more meetings in different locations. Some of the committees I know are, are helping draw that. So, for example, the facilities committee, you know, is is going to have two, well, each one of our meetings for the actual committees at a different school. But then the two workshops that we're hosting for the communities are obviously at two different schools, and then tying in some of the tours, because that was another thing where we didn't get to do the tours the way we wanted to. Instead, you got to be a, a GoPro strapped to a principal's chest uh, that was walking through the schools. And I know by the time I got to the fourth building, you know, I had to take my anti-nausea medicine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't <laughs> ideal. It wasn't <laughs> ideal, yeah. And, and nothing against Steve Lotus, but you got a little jump in your step, so that was, uh, that was hard <laughs> to follow. <on> the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, other, the other, tying into facilities, the other things I gathered, which I'll share with Jonathan and... Um, Mike Hacker and Steve Combs as I did download all the resources that were shared from the facility sessions that I went to. Some of them are applicable, some of them aren't, but I just thought it's good fodder for us as we're continuing to lean in on that facilities team. So I'll share that with you in the coming days just so you have that as well. The only thing I was disappointed with with facilities is they had a little view master they gave out and uh, C.G. Schmidt and oh, yes. we weren't in it and I thought after all the great work they did here, it would, they, they had uh, pictures of different schools that they did things in but I, I just thought that that was kind of neat and I thought oh Greendale could have made that so. Yeah. Maybe they maybe we just didn't get the Greendale disc. Yeah, that's you know right. that you dropped. I don't know. It's in my classroom right now. <laughs> my students look at. I know it was a flashback. <laughs> Nineteen seventy. Um, 
could I just add about the delegate assembly then? Um, and I know we have some residents or a resident that came to speak about one of the topics. Um, I have all the to vote totals. I won't go through those tonight. Um, there were amendments and, and things that were added uh, before the final vote, but everything did pass with the resolutions. Um, there was a pretty in-depth discussion with Resolution 2207, which was curriculum and professional training on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Um, uh, for the most part, everybody um, did approve that, but there, there were a couple districts that I was really disappointed to hear kind of their their bias towards their own district and not thinking beyond to other districts. Um, this is not something that WASB wants to see as an unfunded mandate by any means, but it is something that's a move in the right direction to include all, all students. Um, and so um, I was happy to uh, be able to represent us for that one. I will just say that that one uh, went through on a vote of, um, let's see, well, I don't have the final. Yes, uh, 181 yeses to, or 188 yeses to 81 no. So there there was a larger group that I, I was surprised that that number was as high as it was, but I think some people thought it was going to be additional things that school districts were going to be taxed with. Um, the NSBA, um, the WASB has determined we're, we're not pulling out at this point of, WA, um, of uh, NSBA, but um, they have determined that the language will read membership in a, a national organization in the event that we find another national organization that we can be working with. So it's, it's a little bit more broad. Um, and that was just to go along with um, the situation that happened at the beginning of this year when uh, the former president sent the message to the president of the United States, um, the, the president of NSBA at the time sent a letter on behalf of NSBA without clearing it through all of the uh, state organizations. And so that caused a lot of controversy. But um, I did actually vote no um, on the first amendment to that, um, that uh, there was a question, um, I think it was like the word will and may or whatever, I, I did go in and vote no, but then once the, the full question came to, to the table, I did vote yes in favor of that language change. But other than that, everything was a yes vote. Thank you. Sure. What, did we answer all your questions, Kim? Of course. <laughs> I think um, in the presentations that we did, uh, there was some affirmation of, particularly in the one I did around the role of equity and continuous improvement processes, is that I was starting from a vantage point of you're collecting data and how do you um, look at your data through different lenses to determine what you have, and was surprised to find out the number of districts that don't even have the basic data Building block. beyond what is already pr published by DPI for the entire, for everybody. So that was sort of a surprising like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well then you got to take a couple steps back yeah. and get your arms around the data you already have. Sure. So. And you said that was, I remember you saying that your session was well attended. It was well attended. Yeah. We probably had about 50 in the room. Yeah. And people stuck around after to mm -hmm. talk. That was I good. think you had the most engaging Q and A session out of any of the sessions I went to, and I think it went like you said. People were then what? lined up afterwards to ask questions yeah. and talk yeah. about things. So, well done, great. Yeah, job thank you for doing that, Kim. It's yeah. it's it's always hard to present, especially at at a statewide convention. So the attendance. Nobody mentioned this yet, but the attendance was down quite a bit this year. I think they well, it was up from the virtual, but it was <laughs> down from the previous <laughs> yeah. year. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, it was. But and um, it was due part of it was partially due to the restrictions and the surge that was happening at the time of the convention in mid January. Right, because mm -hmm. you you had to either show a vaccination card or. Um, Negative COVID test, I think. Yes. yes. Yep. So. Yes. And then that was right in the middle of that Omicron surge. So yep. yeah. So. We'll appreciate everyone attending and sharing your thoughts and insights. Obviously, if other things come to mind, please do share them with administration. Um, or if there's you know certain components from the powerpoints or other things of that nature, it's always great to, to pass that along. And you can pretty much access 
every workshop online. They have links um, online, and we you don't even have to like we don't have to go beyond our regular membership to see that. So correct, you can see their handouts. You can't see their recordings. They're all not the recordings. recorded. Yeah, and thanks again. You know, I know we mentioned a few times, but to yourself, Kim, and also Julie, Maggie, for representing Greendale Schools in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'd like to move on to agenda item 5.3 and hear from Paris and Wes around their student board member update. Yes, thank you. Um, so I don't have much to say outside of student council currently, um, but the student council executive board did meet today to discuss plans and organizations, um, organization for future plans in regards to student council, so that includes um, calendar structure. We've had some issues in terms of preparing in advance what we want to do, and there's more time that we want to spend doing certain things and less time we want to spend on doing other things. So we're working on reformatting our calendar to make sure we can get proper attendance. Um, we're going to discuss our attendance policy in a meeting on Monday um, to make sure that all students that said they want to be in student council are actively participating and bring their um, strengths, their voice, whatever, to um, the group and we're also working on strengthening our involvement in our subcommittees within student council there's currently four committees we have the events committee the PR committee so they would handle a lot of our social media and Instagram um, mainly for events we have our student wellness committee that focuses a lot on blood drives and um, health related things we do want to do more in that a aspect and then tomorrow we are actually reintroducing our student advocacy committee um, which I will be um, handling and taking place after school tomorrow and this committee is basically just a group and a um, opportunity for student council members to participate more um, so towards school policy and how they can work I think it's super important um, we haven't had one active since around 2019 mm -hmm. because of COVID and everything and I do love student council for the events however um, at the end of the day it is a student government based group and I think we should um, go forward in instructing students as well through that so we're elaborating on ways to improve school community and structure and um, Wes has a little bit more to talk about that committee as well uh, yeah so um, tomorrow during the meeting we will uh, discuss our first initiative and we will be talking about doing a survey on the advisory and ACP periods where we are going to try to gain student feedback and possibly implement some changes in the near future and we would propose uh, said changes and said data to the board at, towards the end of the year and we'll be talking about the different things that we do in advisory um, we talk about things such as the student equity team coming in and sources of strength and by doing the survey we hope to gain adequate feedback for what students uh, think about advisory and we really want to see any feedback on making changes as there are um, there is talk of from students that um, the advisory period as it is is not meeting everyone's needs and we hope as um, a student council and as the school board representatives to be able to make a positive change in that um, in addition to that um, and to go off what he said we'll go more specifically throughout our student re annual report about the data that we've collected um, and more so what advisory periods currently look like today we did have an advisory period that focused on student equity team recognizing Black History Month um, I didn't work on the presentation however some members did and I appreciated it very much they did mention one of my favorite um, leaders Valar Phillips mm -hmm. um, congressperson for Wisconsin and I admire her a lot so that was cool to see and that's kind of some of the things we'd like to implement further as well as resource periods and um, other lessons structured towards social emotional learning so mm -hmm. and in addition to um, the advisory period um, spring sports begin in two weeks with track and others beginning on the 7th and two weeks from tomorrow uh, juniors uh, have to take their ACT which I'm very excited for <laughs> <laughs> nice. that's called the statewide administration I always like to clarify that because whenever I say the statewide ACT administration, people think that it's statewide data, but it's not. It's just our data from that one day, March 8th, when all the juniors take the test. That's the statewide test. 
So how do, how do you guys plan to go about um, uh, distributing the survey? Is it just going to be emailed to everyone, and is it all grades, um, uh, freshmen through seniors? Yeah, that's a good question. So we actually have been somewhat communicative with um, Dr. Menzik here. Um, we are finalizing our survey, and we hope at the Student Advocacy Committee tomorrow we can push it out to the members that attend that meeting just to get pre-data and see what they think. Because personally, I do believe people in student council are a little bit more aware of what's going on in their classrooms and at school, and they have a good intention about what they're going to put out, as I would hope. Right. Um, and then on the next meeting that Wes um, Dr. Minzik and I have, we can go through that um, and then see if there's any changes we can make to um, improve the survey. And then I believe on March 14th, we're going to send it out to the full student body. Okay. And I think that's something we're going to do during an advisory period. Mm -hmm. um, that way we can get all students to participate in it. So, nice. And I'm assuming they'll can be op open-ended? They are not college students yet, and they have outstanding research design. They are piloting their survey. Nice. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that is, that your is, help, though. It's your help. <laughs> well, well done on that. I think that's important, too, because like you said, you're going to find out information. And then, too, if you're looking at not only just feedback from what's happening, but also how can you improve and what are some opportunities that we could implement. You know, that, those sometimes get to become hard questions because it's, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to lead the question, right, by giving them, oh, we could do this or do that. You want to make sure that that's coming from the students and, and real feedback around things that are important to them, which is a lot harder to create a question than, than, it's, than it should be. But I know that. Yeah, how, like, how the question is phrased yeah. is really key. So. I can say, too, that being students, um, you guys are the heartbeat of why we're all sitting at this table right now, so your voice is really important, and I look forward to getting the report back. And uh, th Will that be your end-of-the-year report, then? Um, yes, I believe so. There, I think we're planning on doing it in spring, and um, I think we'll also be working with Ms. Minzik as well. And um, sorry. Not Ms. Simonsic. We're doing that already. <laughs> um, but Ms. Ledesma and Ms. Olson as well, because I think Ms. Ledesma is doing a report on that as well. So okay. we're going to get as much feedback as yeah. possible. Well, thank and you we're going to coordinate student presentation and staff presentation in that space. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you again for all you do, and continue to lean in and be that voice for your peers. It's important. Mm -hmm. Agenda item 5.4, legislative update, Kathy. So I've got two things. Uh, I won't read through all of it, but uh, tomorrow there is going to be um, the assembly actually is scheduling education bills uh, floor session. Um, and what they're, uh, what they're doing, it's really the GOP education reform package is on the docket. Uh, it, it includes bills that had yet to receive public hearing or committee vote before they were added to the proposed calendar. So it's, it, I'm going to just say it, it's kind of a rush through kind of thing right now. Um, they're presented, these bills are presented so late in the session and being advanced so quickly, it gives the impression that they're primarily intended as political statements. Um, so um, as lawmakers are advancing these bills, you can expect them to probably be vetoed by the governor. Um, I won't go into all of them, but there, there are like probably two or three dozen bills um, that are being proposed here, and um, the WASB does not support this either. So um, if you want to look closer at the website, you can find out more in depth about those. Um, and then there was a legislative update on the bond referendum uh, regarding concealed carry firearm possession bills clearing the state Senate. Um, and WASB does um, oppose this. Um, there, um, I'm just trying to see. Well, there's two things. There's the bond bill and um, they uh, oppose it because the rates change and placing a rate on the ballot would essentially be a guessing game and the final rates which may be a year or more later than the vote, will almost always not match what is on, put on the ballot. So uh, WASB is concerned that this will be interpreted as misleading, especially if the bond rates go up. And then the other one that they, um, the other bill, this is um, Assembly Bill 495, was being proposed by a Representative Brooks. And that one is regarding allowing concealed carry um, licenses to uh, allow 
uh, people as their parents as they're dropping off uh, students to have a firearm in their vehicle while dropping off or picking up their students. And WASB, WASB is strongly uh, opposed to this um, because we do not, as an organization, support the ability of anyone who is not law enforcement from possessing a firearm on school grounds. So those were the two main takeaways right now. There, there's plenty of other things on the WASB website. And I did attend the legislative update um, at the state convention too, so. Great, thanks Kathy. All right, 5.4, board committee updates. Any board committee updates that need to be shared? Uh, well, our policy committee is due to meet again sometime soon, due the 31st, yep. So, and Kim, do you know which, off the top of your head, which policies we'll be reviewing? No. Okay, <laughs> which is fine, because <laughs> I, do I don't either, I don't either. Head. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, I don't know. We are well, moving into you know? the 400 series yeah. because we go on a cycle, and so we're moving into 400 series policies. Okay. But I don't remember which ones we're starting with. Okay, no problem, 400s. So if anybody's following, 400s. <laughs> do we, uh, with our policies, do we, um, reach out to WASB still. I know we did have an audit. Are we still working with them to kind of We have completed them? the audit, um, but we have a protocol and a process among our administrative team in which we uh, seek sample policies, um, review any comments or feedback that we've had on policies, go back to that audit to make sure that we're still in alignment, um, and then there's a process by which we bring forward recommendations to the policy committee. So yeah, and I think yes, we do always request. And then we also look at policy changes. And we subscribe to the WASB policy update that comes out okay. bi-monthly. And I have to commend uh, Dr. Amidzik because I've been watching school board meetings for a long time, and she's been very methodical about reviewing. Because you are supposed to be reviewing your policies on a regular basis, and then also on an as-need basis. You know, so. Um, I'm really grateful that we are, con you know, policy work is not for everyone. It's a little dry and detailed, but it's really important. You know, it's really important to have updated policies and policies that you can actually enforce and that makes sense. So. Are you meeting every other month? Is that a No, time? twice. No, no, every other month yeah. on the uh, fourth Monday. Okay. And it looks like, Noel, did you find the number we're on? Are you looking through? It is the 400 series, but okay. we're also looking at the uh, park and rec. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, park and rec met two weeks ago. February 9th was when we met, and it was a good meeting. They had a very successful registration for their winter, spring, winter courses. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> they had the little women for the community theater. Um, and they, they uh, had a very good, it was a little bit of a low turnout, but they raised money for the Women's Fund, raised $1,546. Uh, for, for those who don't know, the community theater always picks a, a nonprofit to raise money for, so at the end of the show they collect donations for that fund, and it always relates to whatever the subject matter is usually for that particular um, musical or theater. The summer pick for musical, which is in July, uh, last, one, last weekend in July, July 28th through the 30th, and August 4th through the 6th will be Mary Poppins. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh yeah. one of my favorites. They'll be flying into Greendale. <laughs> and they will, um, the other thing of note is they're doing an Easter egg hunt on April 9th. What were the dates on the Mary Poppins again? Mary Poppins. End of July. Uh, July 28th through the 30th, and then August 4th through the 6th. All right. Um, so I'll just touch on SWSA. Um, I continue to meet with them uh, every month. Uh, we just had a meeting last Monday, or I'm sorry, last Tuesday morning, I think. Um, the executive director, Terry Phillips, is um, moving on to some other um, career opportunities. So they are looking for someone. She, she has been amazing in um, coordinating those meetings and uh, really getting the school boards and the, you know, the administrators from all over southeastern Wisconsin to work together and collaborate. Uh, we continue to meet with uh, Dr. Goodside and Dr. 
Kari from Children's Hospital, and it's probably to no surprise for anyone, but I think um, we are in, the, and this was mentioned last week that, you know, a, a lot of districts are looking at their plans um, and looking at opportunities to potentially scale back on some of the protocols now that things are looking, you know, in a, the right direction. But then I read something today that there's another variant. So, um, but the SWSA continues to be a great net networking. And I think, uh, Dr. Mizek, you serve on the executive committee of that. I'm not on the executive committee. Oh, you're not. Okay. I, um, I do attend the meetings. Okay. So... And anyone can attend. There are sometimes other boards, um, board members from other school boards. I, I guess that would have to be something that would be posted if there were three of us or more. But um, they're super informative. And just hearing from the other districts, I... In the past, that would have been the case. But given that you're just simply listening and okay. there is, and it's virtual. Gotcha. You're not engaging in discussion and you're not in the same room. So okay, would be okay. Well, that's all I have. So the last thing on our agenda is board calendar review. Anything you want to add, talk about or Sure. Discuss? Tonight there is a Highland View fundraiser at uh, Toppers. There's still 30 minutes to get your order in. <laughs> uh, next week, Canterbury has a fundraiser <coughs> for um, at, hold on, I moved. Panther Pub, I think, no. Yes, Panther Pub on uh, next week, Monday. Uh, you can dine out to support the Canterbury PTO. Um, next week, uh, Friday, is Read Me a Story Night at Highland View. And on March 3rd, it's the Community Health Fair, and that is the middle school presentations um, of their health projects. So those things are coming up. And then after your next board meeting, you have uh, Soup with the Soup on March 9th and uh, the Community Facilities Planning Meeting at Highland View. Um, with that team, and then of course the musical opens on um, March fourth. Fourth. So uh, the soup with uh, the soup with the soup. How is that? It, that's um, via Zoom. In in how is it? Via Zoom, bring your own soup, and I'm just available for a conversation. Have you have you had a good attendance for those? Uh, we had about eight at the last one. Okay, that's all right. Um, with the calendar, I know I talked to you about this, Dr. Midzik. Um, with the transition we're about to undergo as a board, um, if possible, I'd love to see the um, annual board retreat moved up, um, if that is possible. I know we typically do it in June, um, but I thought it would be very beneficial to maybe start off on the right foot with the entire board. I don't know what any of the rest of you feel, but I, I, I think that's a very beneficial thing for us to have, and I... I just think, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of change coming our way. We can certainly have that discussion at the board reorganization on April, whatever the fourth Monday. Yeah, the fourth, fourth, Monday, fourth, April. fourth Monday in April. Is it the yeah. fourth or the, the 25th? 25th. Yeah. 25th. So that yeah. would be the day that we could have that because the new board would be seated. Sounds good. Anything else for calendar reports? No calendar review for me if there's anything else people want to promote. Maybe, maybe just to reiterate Oliver's dates, it's March 4th, 5th, 11th, and 12th at 7.30, and then there's a matinee on the 6th at 2 p.m. Other than that, the I didn't 10th have... The 10th is senior night at the theater. Tickets are available for that, which is dinner and a show. Oh, the senior night is back? The senior night is back on March 10th. March 10th. Okay. You can sign up to volunteer, I'm sure. Kitty, or Kitty Goyette would like that. <laughs> <laughs> See you there on the 10th. Do we pick up our tickets at the will call or where, where are those going to be? I just... Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going to that. All right, so next up was additional comments and questions from visitors. Does not appear. Everybody went away. You scared them all. I see anyone. So with that, uh, the meeting is... The weather scared them all. Oh, yeah. The freezing rain. <laughs> um, I move to adjourn. I'll second. We don't, oh, we don't. We don't even need to move and second, but I appreciate that. So with that, we will adjourn at uh, eight twenty-six p.m., which may be our fastest meeting in a while. So.